boy, I see I need it. And I, I'm, yeah. I'm looking for the Lord to, to help us in this yeah. revival. Yeah. All right, I'll get you a hymnal and turn to page 120. We'll stand, sing, then after we sing the congregation, we'll get the choir back up here and sing. Yeah. <clears throat> Starts out, I heard, I heard, amen. Because we we heard the word of God, amen. God birthed that faith in our hearts, amen. Thank the Lord. All right, brother Larry, you get you just get the choir up here.
say it. coming back it says be the answer to earth's sorrowing cry yeah, amen. Amen. amen I'm saying in chapter 8 that the earth groaneth and travaileth and right. I'm, I'm thankful the Lord redeemed me by his blood but he, he redeemed he redeemed us he redeemed everything that failed one of these days all things will be put under his feet amen, amen. ain't you glad I need to ask the Lord Blessings on the service before we go any farther. Uh, good to have Brother Ray Brown with us. Hey. Brother, would you pray?
Amen. Amen. Ask me why I am so happy when things in life go wrong. You ask me why when life gets hopeless, I can sing a cheerful song. Let me tell you now, my brother, of this Jesus that I feel. When he saved my soul from despair, his spirit was so real. And it's the realness of the spirit, that's why I am so free. The Savior worked a miracle when he saved a wretch like me. I can feel his presence near me as I go from day to day. And the Spirit of the living God will brighten up my day. I never worry when the shadows lengthen or when the road of life gets dim. For Jesus is my shepherd, and I put all my trust in him. And someday I shall reach heaven, no more I'll have to roam. For the Spirit of the living God will guide me safely home. And it's the That's why I am so free. The Savior worked a miracle when he saved a wretch like me. And I can feel his presence near me as I go from day to day. And the Spirit of the living God will brighten up my day and the spirit of the living god will brighten up my day Salvation ain't a feeling. I understand that. Yeah, amen. And, uh, and because feelings come and go, preach talked about that last night. Emotions go up, they come down. You know, circumstances are different every day. Right. But I can't deny that uh, since the time the Lord saved me, that uh, things ain't different. There's, there's something, and that something is Him. It ain't a thing. Him living in me, yeah. I can't I can't do what I used to could do without without Him uh, speaking to my heart, Amen. And uh, He leads us and guides us, hey. Amen. Yeah. Thank hey. the Lord. I'm, I, I thank the Lord for His guidance and His Spirit. Hey. And it's the Spirit of God that took the Word of God that opened my heart to my need, drawed me to to the. Lord. Jesus, he baptized me, amen, into the body of Christ, 
He came into me, took up his abode. Amen. Amen. He, Jesus said, if I go away, he said, it's expedient that I go away. So if I don't come, if I don't go away, the comfort won't come. Right. But when he's come, he'll uh, he'll reprove the world of sin, yeah. of judgment, of righteousness. Right. I don't know about you, well, I do do, I do. If you're saved, he did that. He, repro he reproved of judgment, sin, judgment, and righteousness. Yeah. And he's still doing that today. Yeah. Amen. Right. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Hey. Amen. I know. I know the Spirit of God don't draw emphasis on Himself. He points us to the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Hey. And I, I'm good, but I'm glad it's real. Hey. I'm glad salvation's real. Yes. Amen. The preacher preached last night about about biblical faith producing a change. Amen. And that's that's exactly what it does. It, it changes. I didn't change. The Lord changed me. Thank the Lord. All right. We'll, uh, uh, Brother Jones, you come on. Let's pray for the preacher tonight. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. What an honor to be in the Lord's house this evening. We thank God for work. Thank God for his blessing, man. Thank God for the singing, the worship. We exalt the name of Jesus. Praise Amen. his holy name. Amen. We'll be in John chapter number 8 tonight. John chapter number 8. Before we read. Father, in Jesus' name, we bow to you again this day. Lord, you are marvelous. You are majestic. Lord, everything about you is wonderful. Yeah. I exalt your holy name. I bless you and praise you and worship you this evening. Lord, you understand us. You know our inabilities. You know everything about us. And so, Lord, without you, we are nothing. But you said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I thank you tonight, Lord. You are the enabler. You can give us the grace and strength to do what's need to be done. Bring my mind to sharpness. Allow me to speak the word of God clearly. May the Holy Ghost have liberty to speak to our hearts, and we'll thank you for what you do. There might be a precious soul sitting here tonight in the balance, considering their eternal destiny. I pray their heart will be enlightened to the truth, and we'll thank you for what you do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 <clears throat> Before we read John chapter 3, it is good to know that Jesus is dealing with the Amen. Amen. And he's drawn their attention to subjects. And we'll endeavor to put the subject together tonight. He's in dealing with sin and truth. Amen. He tells them they are sinners. They cannot accept the fact they are sinners. They used everything to justify themselves. They used the law, which they broke, to say that they were not sinners. Right. Oh. They used their heritage as being a Jew, that is, the lineage of Abraham, uh, to justify themselves, but yet they were sinners. Amen. Right. Religious culture to justify themselves. The Pharisees often boasted of their fasting. They boasted of their giving. Uh, they boasted of the things they did. Right. So Jesus takes apart all of that and shows them again and again they are sinners. Yeah. Yeah. And he shows the truth about sin. Jesus always dealt with the issue of sin. Yeah. When they carried the man in, it was sick of the palsy and dropped him down through the roof. The first thing Jesus dealt with was his sin. He said, thy sin be forgiven thee. The Pharisees got upset because they said, how does he have power to forgive sin? And Jesus said, which is easier to say unto the man that's sick of the palsy, thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say, take up thy bed and walk. Yeah. And he said to the sick of the palsy, he said, take up thy bed and walk. He took his bed and carried it out, amen. And Jesus made clear it is a necessity to deal with sin. Amen. 
what the woman at the well, as she came out and they got into the discussion, amen, she wanted to have a religious discussion. He said, go call thy husband. She said, I have no husband. He said, thou sayest well, I have no husband. You have had five husbands. The man you have now is not your husband. Right. And she said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. He was much more than a prophet. Amen. He was the son of God. Amen. Right. Hey. Amen. Over and over, Jesus dealt with men's sin. When he faced the man at the pool who had laid there 38 years. Can you imagine laying 38 years as an invalid? When he healed that man, he said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing than this come upon thee. Jesus knew what his life had been that brought him to that place. Yeah, right. And it reminded him it's sin that got you here. Right. Go and sin no more, yeah. lest the next situation be worse than this situation Again and again, he dealt with sin. He dealt with the Pharisees' hypocrisy and, and, and told them about their hypocrisy. He even called Herod the old fox and dealt with him, amen. Yeah. Jesus didn't dodge the sin issue. So as we begin to read, let's start, if you will, in verse number, let's start in verse number 23. And he said to them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. May I say to you that we're living in a world that people don't want to admit they are a part of this world. Yeah. This world is cursed with sin and has affected every one of us. Right. Yeah. Jesus said you're of the world. The world is the issue that saturated your life, amen. Though they were Jews, though they could link their lineage and their heritage uh, to Abraham, uh, though they could speak greatly of their, uh, their culture, they were sinners, amen. Right. amen. Jesus said, I said it therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. Yeah. For if you believe not that I am he, Ye shall die in your sins. Right. Jesus had dealt with them again and again and again and again and again about their life and their need for a Savior. Right. And yet again and again they rejected the grace of God and the truth about Jesus Christ. For sake of time, let's drop down in the verses. Verse number 31. Let's read verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Thank God for those who get right with God. Amen. The Bible said he came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as did receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for that great gift of Amen. salvation. Amen. By grace, as I said last night, by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. The, the word of God is clear. Jesus came to save sinners. Amen. He said, I come to seek and save that which is lost. Amen. So Jesus is appealing to them again as he did over and over and over. Many did believe on the Lord Jesus. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. There's two groups here in this chapter. There's that group that will not accept Jesus Christ. There's that group that did accept Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, that same mix is in the world today. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then, ye, then are you my, disi my disciples indeed. Yeah. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Amen. To have Christ for a moment is an impossible. To receive Christ is to have him for eternity. Amen. 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 
And Jesus understood that they were those who were just like they are today. I've seen folks run down to the altar. They've had marital problems. Their wives moved out. They run to the altar. Uh, they're there for one reason. They're hoping to get their marriage back together. Yeah. The fact that they've sinned against a holy God is not bothering them. Or a man loses his job or is in financial straits or he's in problems with the law or other issues and he runs to an altar and he's broken and weeping. My friend, you can have all kinds of repentance and have no getting right with God. There's people in prisons all across this world today that cry and weep for the crimes they've committed. They cry and weep over the people they have harmed. But they have no remorse that they've sinned against a holy God. Right. Jesus drew attention to sin. And Jesus drew attention to the truth. And he said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In verse number 40 he says, but now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth which I've heard of God, this did not Abraham. They said, we're the, we're the children of Abraham. He said, if you're the children of Abraham, you do the works of Abraham. Right. Right. He said, I've told you the truth. Paul writing to the Galatians says, uh, you would have plucked out your eyes and gave them to me. But now, he says, I've become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Right. I tell you, Jesus knows the only thing will help a man is the truth. Amen. 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 Nothing else will get the job done. Yeah. Verse 44. He straightened them out again and said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, right. because there is no truth in him. May I say to you tonight, the devil never told you the truth one time. Everything he ever told me would make me happy and end up making me sad. Right. Everything he ever told me would make me get better off, I got worse off. Right. Everything he told me would bring me gain, brought me loss. He never told me the truth. Amen. And then when he gets you into trouble, he tries to tell you another lie to get you out of trouble, and you get worse in trouble, and the devil Amen. never helped anybody. Amen. Amen. He said, the devil's not going to get you out of this mess. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? I want to preach tonight and put those two words together. And I want to preach tonight, Lord, helping us, the truth about sin. Amen. Jesus never dodged the truth about anything and has certainly never dodged the truth about sin. The Bible says the word of God is clear over and over through the word of God. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It doesn't matter who you are. Sin will do you no good. It doesn't matter where you're from, where you're going, how old you are, how young you are, how smart you are, how ignorant you are. Sin is a destructive force, Amen. and it's Amen. never done anybody any good. Amen. Amen. When God is speaking in the Old Testament about revival, if my people are called to my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God is expecting us to have a turning place in our life when we have allowed things to be in our life that is displeasing to God. He expects there to be a turning in our life. Seven messages are given in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3, to the seven churches of Asia. And in all of them, he deals with issues, though in two of them, they don't have a major problem. He says to the rest, repent, 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 amen. Repenting is turning away from what you should not be. The first thing I want you to know about sin is this. God's word is clear. All have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Amen. None are righteous, no, not one. Amen. There's not a man, the Bible says, that doeth good and sinneth not. The word of God is clear. We are born with a nature that's come from Adam, and we deal with it on a daily basis in our lives. Amen. Amen. 
Turn, if you will, to 1 John chapter number 1 just for a moment. God is wanting us to know the truth about sin. If we're willing to be ignorant, we can be ignorant. And God said there was people who are willingly ignorant. That is, they just will not accept the truth. They will not accept what the Word of God says, and they remain ignorant, amen. Right. But the Word of God is light. It is a lamp into our feet, a light into our path, and God's Word illuminates truth into our heart, amen. amen. In 1 John chapter number 1, verse number 8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him that is making God a liar. And his word is not in us. Right. So sin is a universal problem according to this Bible right here. Sin is a problem that you and I have to deal with and be honest about. And only being truthful about ourselves will help us keep ourselves right with God. Amen. If you're in this building tonight and you're lost, you will have to admit you're lost before you'll ever get saved. You'll never see a person who is an excellent swimmer who is just out there floating calling out for a lifeguard. But you see a person that's struggling to get their head above the water. As soon as they get it above the water, they'll cry for help. Amen. Amen. God is trying to get you lost so he can get you saved. Amen. If you cannot realize you need a Savior, you'll never look for one. Amen. You'll never ask for one. You'll never seek for one. Amen. Amen. Sin is an issue that God deals with all through the Word of God. Sin has affected every person on the earth. Sin is affecting us more and more every day. Matter of fact, around our nation, it's crumbling and, and falling apart because of wickedness and ungodliness and filthiness. Right. Yeah. Right. Sin has wages. Amen. You see, we're living in a society that believes it can do as it wants to do without any wages. But the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Amen. Every day sin brings death. It not only brings physical death. In the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible said, God said, In the day you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. Amen. They died that day. Amen. Their relationship with God died that day. Amen. Their purity and their holiness died that day. yesterday will be torn by sin tomorrow. Sin never you are alive. Sin takes you closer to the graveyard every time you play with it. Amen. Sin has wages and you will reap wages that you never wanted to reap. Amen. Just as much as eternal life is the gift of God, I'm telling you, sin will bring eternal death if you keep playing with it and do nothing about it and don't let God take care of it. Right. Amen. Right. The truth about sin is not a pretty picture, amen. Sin does not just have a problem that deals with all of us, and sin does not just have wages, but sin has motivation. Turn, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want you to note these places in the Word of God. Sin has factors that helps along the way. And in chapter number, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, the Lord talks about sin and how it affects us. Verse 33, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. How have we gotten from a place of a nation that had standards and, and had uh, righteousness and had the power of God upon it to where we are today? It was sin, amen. Right. And you and I are living in a society that's filthy from one end to the other. Right. It's saturated yeah. with wickedness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me give you an example. You'll probably not guess who had to sign this little document I'm going to read to you in the United States of America. 
You might think it was a clergy going into a Bible college or someone accepting a position that was very near to the nature of mankind, such as a nurse or a doctor, whoever it might be. I, starts off I, and then their name is written, do hereby swear before the great living God that during my engagement and while I'm employed by of Russell Majors and, and Waddell, I will under no circumstances use profane language, that I will drink no intoxicating liquors, that I will not quarrel or fight with any of the employees of the firm, and that in every respect I will conduct myself honestly to be faithful in my duties and to direct all of my acts as to the confidence of my employers. So help me God Almighty. Amen. Who would you think would have to sign that? Anyone who rode a pony for the Pony Express. Amen. Our nation was built upon principles of righteousness and even the smallest places that had employers and employed people, they had a basic understand of the need for righteousness. Amen. That's a better commitment than most pastors have to sign in America today. Amen. And God is saying to us, sin is a reproach to any people. We're living in a society that has produced and put together every motivating factor to lead you into sin it possibly can. Amen. I may have made this statement last night, but then I'll make it again. I said the other day in our church, I, I said in other churches, amen, I said you'd be better off to give a five-year-old boy a running chainsaw than to give a 15-year-old boy a cell Jesus never hesitating in dealing with sin, whether it was the woman at the well, whether it was the Pharisees that walked down the street, or where it was any person else, amen. And matter of fact, uh, the preaching of this Bible is strict on the issues of getting right with God. Yeah. Amen, amen. amen. The truth about sin is it will find a way to get to your life if you allow it. Amen. The Bible speaks of guarding your heart. The Bible speaks of guarding your tongue. Yeah. The Bible speaks of girding your mind. Yeah. The Bible speaks of you watching what you do. Amen. The right. Word of God says you and I are responsible to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible said we're not our own. We're bought with a price. Yeah. Therefore, we're to glorify yeah. God in our body and in our spirit, which are God. Paul cried out to the Christians, and the, the verse starts this way. What? Know you not that you're not your own? Do you not know you don't belong to yourself? You belong to God. Right. Do you not know you're not your own? You are bought with a price. Amen. Jesus purchased you with his own blood. You amen. have a responsibility, amen, to live for God. I've used this illustration numbers of times over the years. I'll use it again tonight. We have twisted some of the truths in the Word of God. We often say as Christians, God is living in my body. But that is not true. You're living in His body. Amen. Before He moved into your body, He paid for it. Right, right. He owned it. Your body is his body. Now you're living in a body he purchased with his own blood. There was a transaction took place when you got born again. Yeah, right. He purchased you with his own blood. The Bible says your body. 
and didn't pick up his cards. All the other three picked, and they said, pick your cards up. He said, I cannot pick up those cards. He said, why cannot you pick up the cards? He said, I have no hands. He said, you've got hands. I, we see your hands. He said, these are not my hands. These are God's hands. And Jesus bought them with his own blood. And Jesus don't play cards. Are you listening? We come to a day when we have reduced life of righteousness down so we can do anything we want to do. We can read anything we want to read. We can hear anything we want to hear. We can go anywhere we want to go. But my friend, when you realize you are going somewhere in a body that's not yours. Sin has many motivating factors and God said that evil communications corrupt good manners. You're not going to face God in the right spirit and attitude, my friend, and let the world saturate your soul every day of your life. Amen. Amen. Turn to 1 John chapter number 2. Amen. Hope we're having a good time tonight. Amen. Amen. You know it's a funny thing. We go to the doctor and the doctor says, you want to know the truth? Yes, sir. Well, don't you tell us the truth. <laughs> uh, you want to know what will help you? Oh, yes, sir. I want to know what will help me. <laughs> and you come to the church and you hope the man of God don't tell you what your problem is and don't tell you how to get help. Right. Isn't that a strange thing? Come on. Yeah. God's word will help us Amen. if we will listen to it. Yeah, right. Amen. We don't need fairy tales. The Bible says preach the word. The instant in We need the word of God. We need what God has written in this book so that we can have our lives going in the direction he wants them to go. Amen. In chapter number 2, 1 John, verse number 15. Somebody said, one time preacher, you ought to preach more on love. It'll 
put its filth on you. It'll stain your life. It'll bring harm to you. It will destroy you. It'll wreck you and ruin you. God's word will keep you out of trouble. Amen. 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 The world is trying to draw every believer. And here's what the world is doing. It's working overtime to get our kids. Like this young man, this young man, and this young man, and that young man over there, and this young lady and others, and young parents. Hey, some of us are old enough to have enough sense for some things we're not going to do. But I want to tell you something else. He didn't just quit on them. He would like for us to back up on Jesus ourselves. He would like for you to give your heart, your mind, your soul over to the field of this world and get you attracted to it just as much as these teenagers. It's a battlefield. Do you love Christ? Yes. The world wants you to love it. We're not talking about loving souls. We are loving souls. We should love souls. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's not talking about loving souls. It's talking about loving the corruption of the world. Amen. Amen. The things this world is offering. A few years ago, preaching against NFL or the sports world was really unpopular. But now today, mock our nation and mock our God and have days they call gay pride, gay pride days in the NFL and put pink ribbons on themselves and you still just can't hardly wait to get home to watch them play in God's name. That makes God sick. Yeah. Yeah. We've allowed the devil to integrate into our homes, into our lives, into our mind, into the place we can't even realize the truth about sin. Right. Oh, yeah. right. The devil wants to entertain you. The devil wants to afflict you. The devil wants to draw you into his corruption. Right. Because you'll be the loser. Yeah. The Bible said the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will rob you day after day after day. Yeah. Amen. He'll rob you of the years of your life, my friend. He'll rob you of the peace of your soul. He'll rob you of the things God wants you to have and bless you with. There's truth about sin. Not only does sin have motivation, but sin has a harvest. Be not deceived, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he also reap. If you sow to your flesh, he said, you will of the flesh reap corruption. Amen. Sin has a harvest. It may not be tomorrow. And most likely it won't. But it will be one day. Yeah. Amen. 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 And God illustrates it through giving us examples through the word of God over and over and over. And a lot of times, they were just like us. We think because God didn't act just a minute, then maybe he's going to let it go. But the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not my point. So we're going to go and hell. Do we believe the Bible? Hey. Are we Bible believers? Hey. Hey. Then will God just let you buy? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Hey. For whatsoever man soweth, so shall he also reap. Hey. You think you can just sow to your flesh? Even as a Christian, sow to your flesh, sow to your flesh. No. If you do, you're going to reap a bad harvest. Hey. Hey. David, can you imagine David? What a change had to take place in David's life oh, yeah. for David to do what he did. Now, let's listen to this. David said when his enemies were sick, he fasted and put on sackcloth. Yep. That was his enemy. So when David's enemies were sick, and somebody comes and says, your enemy's sick, David, he would fast and put on sackcloth, young lady, and pray for his enemy. Yep. 
And so it's not just a day or so. He gets word from Bathsheba. I'm expecting a child. Now David really acts out of nature. He sends to the battlefield and tells Joab to send Uriah the Hittite to him. He has a plot. When Uriah the Hittite gets there and comes in and reports to David, he acts like he's interested in the battle. He wasn't interested in the battle. He didn't even go to the battle. How's the battle going? How's Joab? How's the men doing? He said, why are you here? Let's go down and spend a night or two with your wife. Yeah. I'll send some food. Y'all can go down and have an evening meal. Turn the candle lights up. Sin has a harvest. Amen. Doesn't matter if you're David the king. The psalmist. Boy, it's getting quiet here. Yeah, come on. The rod of the Hittite went outside and slept on the porch. Yeah. Come on. What a mighty man. David's servant said, You rod of the Hittite didn't go home. Did he do? No, he slept back on the porch. You brought him back now. And I go down and enjoy my wife, my comrade from Joab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right How can I do that? So he gets him drunk. And again, plot the same plot. Are you with me? Sin has a harvest. Right. Amen. Right. The next morning, they said, Rod of Hittite didn't go down there. He did.
go out. I said, we've got to tell him. How's he going to handle it? They go out and tell him. When they come out, he knew what the story would be. The son was dead. He gets up and says, 50-something to eat. Gets cleaned up. He's going to the house of God. You see, what happened was he tried to cover his tracks instead of getting right with God. It took Nathan, the man of God, pointing his finger and said, David, you're the man. You're the man. You're the individual. He told him the story about the little ewe lamb that the man had taken from the other man. The man had plenty of lambs and killed the little ewe lamb to feed his visiting company. David went into a rage. David said, he'll pay. He'll pay. God said, David, you're the man. You took your ride the Hittite's wife. You had plenty. You didn't need to do that. May I say to you, if you play around with sin, it will bite you right. before it's over with. Right. Amen. That's right. He said, David, your sins are forgiven, but the sword will never leave your house. And David is harvested. Not long he had the beautiful daughter. Her name was Hannah. And he has a son that watches his teenage sister try to find her back. And Amnon had a cousin named Jonadab. And Jonadab said, Why are you, why are you so lean? Why, why are you eating? Why, why are you acting like that? And he said, King David is run off the throne by Absalom. Lord have mercy. Do you know the first slaughter in that kingdom takeover was the entire priesthood of David? No less. Boy, there's others killed. I'm getting back on Saul's family, but let me go on. He goes out with his people. Here's what David said. Spare Absalom. You know why he says spare Absalom? 
He knows that everything that's in his family, he brought it on. Amen. But Joab finds him hanging in a tree by his hair and throws a dart through him. And he comes back, and the word comes back, Absalom's dead. There's a harvest, a harvest, a harvest, a harvest. God's word is clear. There's a harvest. If there's a harvest, there's consequences. Samson lost his eyes because he played around. Others lost their health. Sin has always brought a harvest. Let me give you this. There's a positive note to sin. There's a redeemer. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses from all sin. Turn to Isaiah chapter 1. God speaks about the wickedness and the putrefying condition of mankind in the early part of the chapter. And then he comes down to verse number 18. Come now. Now let us reason together. God's wanting you to come and reason with him. God doesn't have to reason. God ain't changed. But he's going to give you the opportunity to reason with him. Guess what he's going to reason with you about? What's the verse say? And let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet. God's wanting to reason with you about your sin problem. Right. And though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Hey. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Sin is an awful, awful, awful thing. It cost Jesus his life on a Calvary cross hey. because God laid on him my sin. God says, come unto me, all you that lay in heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Hey. He opened the heaven door to you to meet everybody else. But guess what? You're not a robot. Right. God's not going to tie a chain on you and drag you to him. Right. God's not a coward. Right. God gives you the opportunity to choose. You have the opportunity to reject Christ. You have the opportunity to receive Christ. Right. Hey. Amen. What you do with Jesus tonight may determine what he does with you before tomorrow morning. Mm. We're going to meet him someday. That's right. Hey. And Jesus says, come unto me, all your laden, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Hey. Sin is our problem today. Hey. It's not the Democratic Party. Yeah. It's not Washington, D.C. Though it's filthy, wicked, and corrupt. Until we turn back to God, until we get serious, listen, until we who are saved get serious, right. what are we expecting? We're wondering why sinners don't repent. I'm wondering why Christians don't repent. Yeah. Right. I can a whole lot understand why sinners hang on to their sin a whole lot easier than I can understand why Christians will hang on to theirs. The truth about sin is splashed through the pages of this book from cover to cover. God even tells us about the sin of his choice of servants and what they did. God's not hiding the subject. So you can know sin is not good. It will not help you. It will destroy you and it will wreck your life. You young couples, you listen to me. Sin will wreck your marriage. You young people, you listen to me. Sin will wreck your life and destroy you. And you'll wake up one morning wondering, how in the world did I get to where I'm at? God is trying to help us. He will help us. His word will help us. But if we won't listen, he'll let you keep right on going down that road. I believe when David looked over that housetop, the Holy Ghost said, David, don't look over that. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. I don't have but just one thought about Samson. I believe the I believe the Lord says, Samson, get out of there. You don't have no business with you there. 
can't condemn this one. And there's a lot of Christians and a lot of sinners that are not listening. Yeah, right. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you tonight, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, it's frightening to me. Lord, it touches my soul, deals with my heart. God, help us to be guardians of what you give us. And let us listen carefully to your word that will protect us. And help us realize how serious it is to repent and get things right with you. We'll thank you for what you do. Lord, touch souls tonight in this building. Lord, the Holy Ghost is the only one that can reach inside the soul. All I can do is speak your word, but the Holy Spirit of God can go all the way in. I pray your will be done in Jesus' name. Folks are praying tonight. I stand all over the building while folks have already started coming to pray. If you need to come tonight, will you come? He said, Preacher, we need to revive this. We'll start with the church, getting right with God. Dealing with our own sins. The Bible said if you'll judge yourself, you would not have to be judged. But if you won't judge yourself, God said, now I will judge you. What a privilege that God allows you to search your own heart and try yourself and get right with God. Rather than to wait and wait and wait until God has to do something himself. Serious tonight. This has been a very solemn, serious service. And that's so God's wanting to get our attention. What will you do with the word of God and the warnings of this book? If you go back to the house and act and live just the same, and do not make some changes. If God's told you you need to make some changes, you're making a foolish mistake. Father's time, Father's opportunity. Pay attention to God. Some of you will come just play the piano for us while folks are praying. The altar's practically full. There's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. Don't go home without your heart right with God. Don't go home tonight and say, oh, I wish I had gotten right with God. Don't go home and lay in your bed and say, I wish I'd have got a lot with God. Why don't you come and deal with those issues and ask God to forgive you? He is gracious. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. But He said, if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. He said, come, let us do this together. Oh, we're going to reason about these sins. We're going to reason about your sins. Though they be red like crimson, though they're like scarlet. He said, I'll wash them white as wool. I'll wash them white as snow. Amen. You might be here tonight. He said, Preacher, I'm not even saved. He'll save you tonight. He'll save you tonight. Friend, listen, I'd rather drive a hundred miles and be fed the truth of this book yeah. than to walk across the street and be deceived. Right. I don't want to go to a doctor that tells me, you're all right, nothing wrong, when I'm dying and I need somebody to help me. Yeah. I believe God's trying to help us. Tonight. God's word is perfect. God's word is what we need.
He's got the only answer to your problem. He's it. save me I didn't know anything didn't know what to do I knew I was lost the Lord said if you'll come to me it's plain as day he spoke my heart if you'll come to me and I'll save you I stepped out but I stepped out my heart Tell Jesus what you know your problem is. Be truthful with the Lord. Amen. Be truthful with the Lord. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks, says. Get you done said. We're talking about your eternity. What anybody thinks ain't going to matter in eternity. send a message, his word, like that for no reason. Right. Amen. God speak to your heart. Listen, they, they may be some saints of God in here tonight. But God is he, he, he points you out in your heart. See, I'm talking to you. I don't know what you're in. I don't know what you do. God does. Amen. 
this. And I'd wait rather fall on my face in this altar and reason with God about my sin, confess my sin to him, yeah. than to try to hide it. Right. Right. And to try to and try to cover it up with another sin. Yeah. And and snowball and and until I have a ruined life. Amen. That's what God's, that's, that's what he's saying when he's speaking to you. Why don't you come get it fixed right now? Why don't you come get, get, get that cleaned up, amen, out of your life? He, he, he'll clean you up. He'll help you. He would not be he would not be a calling if he, he wasn't gonna help you. Senator this this evening, he would not be calling you if he did not want to help you. He doesn't he doesn't convict our hearts to just to make us miserable. Amen. It's miserable being under conviction. But he does, that's not his purpose. His purpose is, is to bring you to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. One more verse of song. God speak in your heart. Don't, don't turn him away. Don't turn him away. Is there anything between you and God? Honestly, say there's nothing between me and my Savior. Thank the Lord. Hey, it's. I, I thank the Lord that 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 God that God is cares about me enough to say, "Don't go down that road." Right. Amen. Right. Don't look at that. Right. Don't listen to that. Yeah. Don't. Don't think about. Because he cares for you. Here's the lie of the devil. The first first lie he told, he told Eve, he said, might not be the first, but he said, God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, you'll be like him. What he told her is God's withholding something good yeah. from you. God's not withholding something. When he says, don't go down there, don't do that. He's not withholding something. He is keeping you from ruining your life. Amen. 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 That's, that's his desire. He cares for his people. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I'm thankful for the message tonight. Amen. I'm thankful for yeah. God sending it. I'm thankful for God's man Amen. Bold enough to preach it. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Thanks, thank the Lord. Somebody to tell me what's, what I need, not, not what makes me feel good. Yeah. Right? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord tonight for the message and the messenger. Amen. Amen. Somebody got a word of testimony tonight. Yes, sir. Amen, preacher. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Truth's the only thing that's going to help anybody. Truth's the only thing that's going to make us. Anybody else? Word for the Lord. John, just stay and shake the worm like me. Amen, John. Amen, Amen. Brother John. Thank the Lord. Praise his name. Amen. Somebody else? All right. Nobody's got anything on your heart. Can you serve us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock? Pray. Bring somebody with you. Invite somebody. Yeah. Amen. We pray for the preacher. Yeah. Help yeah. him, his wife. Amen. We didn't do this last night. I'm going to do it tonight. I meant to do it last night. We're going to set the offering plate back here at the, at the back. If God put it, the church takes care of the preacher. But if if God puts something on your heart and you want to give something, all of it will go to the preacher. And we, we just want to give you opportunity. Amen. To, to Amen. do what God wants you to do. Amen. Yes. We're not, you know, just God speaks to your heart. Amen. We'll put it off Amen. and play back there as you, as you leave. You just be obedient to the Lord. All right.